Hey, welcome back everyone. Rob here from Ram Studio Comics. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing a lesson with you uh, from my newest course, Figure Drawing, The Body in Action. It's now available on Udemy and on my own site. I'll make sure there's links in the description box below. So I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. It's about drawing uh, a female torso using the bean shape method. Uh, and obviously this can apply to any torso, any size, shape, and form. But if this area of your work tends to look stiff, then I really recommend this particular method. Uh, it really helps with that sense of flow and movement through the body. So without further ado, let's jump in. If you got any questions, make sure to comment below. And I hope you enjoyed today's video. Okay, so I want to talk to you about another way to twist the form. So there's lots of ways to think about this. One of which is uh, the bean shape. So this is um, a pretty simple method for thinking about the, the midsection in a bit more of a organic way and getting that, that twist, okay? So uh, you can draw a few different bean shapes. It's kind of a fun little exercise actually. And I think the tricky part is really just how many ways can you, can you draw this little bean bag or bean, sh bean like shape. Uh, but it's, you know, it's just tricky to think of how the body could contort and bend these different ways, but then relating it to this uh, basic shape. But but it's a neat way to do it, a neat approach, because we tend to stiffen up our characters, right? So this is one that I think really helps you to uh, alleviate that. So we'll just start with these right here. So some are, you know, similar, and we'll try to, uh, you know, make those have some variation as we go here. But first, what I like to do is think about a center line. So, for instance, if I say, okay, this is one where the character is leaning back, this would be the center line. Uh, so the sternum would be right about here. Uh, we could also draw a spine through there if we wanted to, but uh, I'm going to forego the spine on this particular one and focus more on the front, the front center line. So I'm going to drop in that sternum. I'm going to immediately go to the rib cage. So there's that W-like shape that I like to throw in there. And then from here, I really want to get right to the hip section here. So I'm, you know, thinking of the pelvis like this. Okay, something like that. And I'm not going to worry about drawing through like that because I'm just going to cover it up right now anyways. But I want to also talk to you about utilizing these curves to connect these. Okay, so we're going to talk about that a lot as we get into drawing these different figure drawing uh, versions uh, or examples. But it's not just drawing the three main masses and getting the twists and the contorting and the pinching and all that good stuff. It's also utilizing the right types of ways to connect them. And these little curves, these little like C curves, uh, can be very impactful. Like they're they're just softer, right? So it's better than sitting there and trying to attach a straight line, straight line. And I feel like that almost goes without saying. But then again, I see that in people's work where they'll. They'll, they'll do it pretty nice, but then they will, uh, you know, kind of connect things with very rigid lines. And there is a time and a place for that, and we'll, we'll talk about that. You know, angular lines are great for defining uh, bony landmarks. Uh, it's great for showing uh, masculinity in, a, in an illustration. It's great for stylization. There's all sorts of great things to use angles and organic lines for uh, curves versus angular. Um, but there's a you know kind of a uh, a balance and then there's a right place uh for you know certain things but um so just like that we've got a little bit more of the you know the rolled back uh you know upper torso like this we can put a a shoulder back here deltoid collarbones maybe raise an arm now if this was a male form we would show the pectoralis muscle coming down like this and then on this side where the delt is coming up, it's going to pull against the chest muscle. Kind of changes the shape here where on this side with the delt down, it's going to bow around more. Uh, so, you, so, you know, you could show that. I've kind of established that these are wider hips. So I'm going to make this a female uh, torso. I'm going to place the breast right about here. I could start with these kind of ovals to kind of position and get the you know, start of it. And I tend to try to, you know, use some curvature at the bottom, but not, uh, you know, big spheres. I have to soften them up. They, I, I think it's better to think of them like teardrops. 
than uh, you know than spheres than spherical. So something like that. Let's get those in place, and obviously we could bring those closer together, or you know, it just depends on the type of breast that you're trying to draw. And then for the center line, I'm going to bring this back more now, like this. And I like to draw the stomach muscles as one big uh, shape, and it's kind of curved area, and then soften that up. I won't leave it so well defined. Uh, just like if I draw the divides here, I like to position them something like this the belly button right about there but I won't I won't leave those divided lines obviously it's just kind of the way I start it so just like that from our bean bag we have this you know start of a female torso I can add just a little bit of the arms here something like that position the neck up here Okay, and let me soft erase this and clean it up. So from here, uh, what I would really stress is that, you know, you're, you're tracing out the forms that you want to see in your illustration, right? But at the same time, you want to kind of, what I consider rope draw and pull it all together. So uh, as I mentioned, there's areas of this where you wouldn't want to trace every form. So for instance, you wouldn't want to trace every form of the rib cage because you get something very unnatural looking. So you have to kind of pick and choose those areas. Uh, so you, if you want some definition, then you get in there and kind of, uh, you know, show a little bit, but at other points you want to soften it up and make it not so, uh, you know, so in your face, so visible. So subtlety can be, a, you know, good thing right here. And then with breasts, uh, you know, we'll draw and talk about these more, but that's basically one of the things I try to think about is having them look like they sit uh, against the rib cage and at certain points will flatten out so that they don't appear too um, you know too solid too stiff um, against that form so we just have to kind of flatten them out a little bit on the bottom here it's kind of hard from this angle because this isn't really an arrow it shows it showcases it better on this side and sometimes bringing this line up and then showing some of the the reverse bend of the actual uh, rib cage right there is a good way to do it. But I think I think less is more right there. The arm over here, deltoid here. Bring this deltoid up. I feel like from this side. We're going to possibly see two of the heads. So you got the front head, uh, anterior head, and then you have the medial head. And then on the back, you have the posterior. So I think we would see the, the two heads there. Just keep in mind, you're never going to see all three heads at once. That's when you know you've kind of done something wrong. I don't, I don't think there's an angle you can see all three. Maybe from a top, yeah, I don't, I don't think so. Generally, for the most part, you generally just see two at once. Okay, so just like that. And just remember placement for the nipples. One of the easiest ways to do it is to find the center of the collarbones and then draw a, uh, a triangle outward. And this, this usually will give you a pretty good alignment to where you can uh, place the nipples. Remember to use your wrapping lines if you're trying to get the forms figured out. You know, the direction of the forms and that feeling of uh, depth and dimension there. Now 
Okay, so just like that, we've used that bean shape to get us to the, um, the torso um, rather quickly. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's obviously going to vary based upon your confidence at drawing this particular area of the body and, uh, and all that, but it's a, it's a very effective method. Uh, so what I challenge you to do is take this, and, and another way to look at this is to say, okay, you know, where do I want to put the head opening in the shoulders? So you could say, well, this is a body leaned over, you know, kind of doing a bit of a bow. So you could start with saying, okay, there's one opening uh, to the shoulder on this side. This is opening for the neck. This is this opening for the other shoulder. You could use a dotted line because it's on the opposite side, you know, from where we're viewing, viewing it at. And then you establish your center line and then you go from there, or at least that's the way I tend to do it. Uh, so you could start with that and you can really, you know, give yourself some initial uh, guides to how you can get this going. So like th these two, the bottom two are the same, right? But we could say, well, let's, let's bring that neck opening here. Let's put the arm openings here, but now this is the back of the character. You know, it's a bit much of a back bend, but some people are pretty, pretty flexible, right? So they could pull it off. Uh, so do that. We're, we're going to take this and, you know, work out these examples like this, but you can also find your cross section that really helps with placing the rib cage, right? So you could do something like that. And then, so this being the back, I would probably start with, you know, figuring out the scapula. You know, the spine of scapula comes down like this at an angle. I might start there. And, and that's where I'm going to explain to you as we progress through all this that bony landmarks are really helpful. Just like finding center is helpful. Just like placing the, the head and the neck openings, the finding the rib cage, which again would be a bony landmark. But that W shape or W like shape that I like to throw in there uh, is almost like one of my first go to shapes. And then it gives me something to hinge upon. And then I add something else. And Pretty soon you get more comfortable with the bony landmarks and the other features of the body that you have a lot of connection points. You know, it's like a constellation. You can start to see the constellation because you have these other uh, stars to connect the dots, right? So, okay, so that'll bring this particular lesson to a close. I hope you've enjoyed it. I would love to know what you think in the comments section below. And if you'd like to learn more about this course, there's a link below. So I appreciate the support. And as always, good luck with your art and I'll talk to you soon.